Four Types of Friends According to the Buddha The Buddha spoke of great things during his time on earth and created many sutras for mankind to learn from. His sutras had much wisdom for man to absorb, they even still apply today. They taught compassion to all, regardless of negative actions towards us. In an ancient Buddhist story, the Buddha's faithful attendant, Ananda, asked about the importance of having wholesome companions. Ananda asked the Buddha whether having noble friends and companions wasn't half of the holy life. The Buddha replied, Do not say so, Ananda. Noble friends and companions are the whole of the holy life. The Buddha outlined what to look out for in a false friend, and what actions would make you a false friend. Young man, he said, be aware of these four enemies disguised as friends, the taker, the talker, the flatterer, and the reckless companion. The taker is out for himself and weighs his interactions with a view to what he can gain. This person may be marked by false generosity and by a tendency to put himself first and disregard the needs of others. A good friend, a non-taker, is consistent in all his friendships, and treats people in a caring way in good times and bad. You can tell a lot about someone by the way he treats others. If he is kind and generous to you but cruel and stingy to others, how can you trust him? An unwholesome friend says nice things to you when you're happy and generous but disappears when you're broke or depressed. The talker is marked by saying things that he doesn't mean, by making promises that he doesn't keep. This is a real shortcut to determining character. Do you do what you say you will do? Do you make promises you can't keep? Are there people around you whose words you cannot trust? Should everyone trust your word? Part of not being a, vain, talker is knowing your limits, and not promising what you cannot deliver. The Flatterer A flatterer could also be called a two-faced friend. One who says one thing in your hearing and another when you're not around. You don't often discover how others speak of you when you're not there, but you can listen to how they speak of others who aren't present. Would they say the same things if the person being discussed were in the room? Another dangerous form of flattery is the human tendency to defer to others if they seem important. The physically attractive, the glamorous, the powerful, the famous, do you, or someone else, speak to them in a way you wouldn't address other human beings. What makes being noticed by these people so important? Is it worth giving up your integrity? You can't always be sure when someone else is a flatterer, but you can observe your own actions. If you catch yourself talking about someone sarcastically or disrespectfully, acknowledge that you wouldn't say such things to the person's face, and resolve to try not to behave that way in the future. Every situation is unique and deserves consideration, but the goal, wholesome intention, is the same. If you stop and reflect before speaking, you are more likely to refrain from empty and harmful talk than if you don't think first. The Reckless Companion You can easily recognize the reckless companion. This is the friend that appeals to your weaknesses, induces you to stay out later than you intended, get into situations you later regret, drink too much, and speak too carelessly. The Buddha mentions roaming around at night as one mark of a reckless companion. Whether you are misbehaving or not, your reputation is damaged by appearing where and when you don't have any legitimate business. Leading another person astray may be even worse than being led astray yourself, because the underlying, perhaps even unconscious, intention is to harm another. Interestingly, Buddha also gave advice for different types of people that we meet in life. He was especially interested in the friendships we make, because those form our environment and influence us. He described four different types of friends we meet and should seek, the helper, the friend who endures in good times and bad, the mentor, and the compassionate friend. 1. The helper. The helper can be identified by four things, by protecting you when you are vulnerable, and likewise your wealth, being a refuge when you are afraid, and in various tasks providing double what is requested. One who is always there to give aid when needed and one who asks for little to nothing in return. They will always protect you, and show you the way when you are lost or need guidance. 2. The Enduring Friend. The Enduring Friend can be identified by four things, by telling you secrets, guarding your own secrets closely, not abandoning you in misfortune, and even dying for you. The friend who stands by you through every event in your life, and will always there for you. The enduring one does not pass judgment but is simply there through it all for you. 3. The mentor. The mentor can be identified by four things, by restraining you from wrongdoing, guiding you towards good actions, telling you what you ought to know, and showing you the path to samsaric heavens. This type is a teacher or parent. Someone who teaches through love, kindness, their own actions, and compassion. This person has the most patience with you, and truly wants to set an example. The compassionate friend. The compassionate friend can be identified by four things, by not rejoicing in your misfortune, 
delighting in your good fortune, preventing others from speaking ill of you, and encouraging others who praise your good qualities. The people you choose to associate with affect how you think and what you do. And you affect the people you associate with. Are you spending time with people you chose? Or did they choose you? Or both? What activities do you do together? Are the activities beneficial, or at least harmless? Do you feel that others drag you down, or lift you up? And what would your companions say about your effect on them? Remember what the Buddha said. There is no condition of life that more powerfully influences your development than cultivating wholesome friends and companions. Start with yourself, as you are today, and build on your strengths to become a better friend and companion to others. And choose who you spend time with carefully.